My name is Leslie Samuel. I am the husband of one wife and father of two kids, a boy and a girl. Uh, I am the creator of Become a Blogger, where I teach people how to build a business with a blog. I used to be a high school science and math teacher that became a university professor as a result of my blogging with my biology blog. And now I basically teach people how do you take what you're passionate about and turn it into a business. Every single day, I exercise. Um, I have an Apple Watch that tracks my activity every day. And for the last, if I were to look at it, I think it'll say something like 280 something days in a row. I've wow. exercised for at least 30 minutes every day. My journey actually started in 2008. And I remember it's because I learned about a way to use forums to make money with what, what were called freebie websites. Right. And I remember the first day of trying that out, I actually made $70. My name is Abhi Arya, father of two girls, six dogs, husband to a superwoman, a streetcar racer turned hotelier, now social media marketer, and co-founder of the Internet Moguls of the World School, a family digital marketing school with one aim, to learn skills in digital marketing, to be able to work from anywhere and spend that precious commodity that you have with your family. Over to you. I love it. That was very concise. Well, Thank you. my name is Leslie Samuel. I am the husband of one wife and father of two kids, a boy and a girl. Uh, I am the creator of Become a Blogger, where I teach people how to build a business with a blog. I used to be a high school science and math teacher that became a university cool. professor as a result of my blogging with my biology blog. And now I basically teach people how do you take what you're passionate about and turn it into a business. Wow. wow. So you still teach in, at the university? No, I left that job in 2014 to do this full time. Lovely. Lovely. Awesome. Thank you very much. Raya? You're welcome. Okay. My first question is, how did you get the confidence that most people struggle with to leave your you know, normal job and to take on social media marketing as a full time uh, job? Oh, that is, that is a great question because when I made the decision to leave my job, I actually panicked and I was extremely nervous. And I remember one day walking away from my job to go to my car and all of a sudden it was like my heart was racing. Like, what am I doing? Why would I make such a crazy decision when I have a family that depends on me? Uh, but my wife and I had a, a long conversation about it, and we felt like it was the right decision for our family. Um, and for us, we're Christians, and we felt like it was the direction that God was leading us. Uh, sure. And because I had the, confident, the confidence that my wife was supporting me uh, in terms of supporting the decision, and also that we felt that this is where we were called to, to go, I was right. able to, it's not that I was not afraid. I was able to be afraid, but still take that leap uh, with the assurance that, you know what, in, it, it'll all work out in the end. And if I fail at this, I can always try something else. There's no, if you fail, that's the end. No, you fail, you learn, and then you do it better the next time. So for me, it was the confidence in knowing that my spouse was behind me and that it was where we felt led to go. So we just took the leap and the rest is history. Lovely. I love that. Aviana? Yeah. So my first question is, um, how do you spend time with your family while working with your business and growing your business, but also uh, have, have time to spend time with your family, quality time? And um, how do you balance that out? Yeah. That is, that is, I love that question um, because it is something that is very important to me. Um, and the way that I do it now is not the way that I've always done it. It's kind of changed and evolved over time. Right now, the way I do that is I have specific times that I work. I work, generally speaking, between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. So in the morning, it's all my time. I wake up at like 5, 5.30 in the morning. All of that time is just me 
I could do my exercise. I could do my morning routine and all that stuff. When I'm finished work, actually in between, uh, at 1230, I go and I have lunch with my family. Uh, right. Then I get back to work. And at four o'clock, uh, my wife gets to do the work that she is working on. And I spend the rest of that time with my kids from four to eight until they go to bed. And then from eight on, it's just myself and my wife. So we've basically scheduled in when is going to be work time, when it's going to be family time. And I try my best to abide by that. I am very protect. Uh, a lot of people think that I'm very busy and it's not that I'm very busy. It's that I'm very protective on, with my time because I want to make sure that I have time for my family as well as time to work on what I need to do in my business. That is the essence of the internet moguls of the world family digital marketing school. It has to be family and work together. The one Absolutely. big learning that came from here from this last part of the interview was kids go to sleep at eight o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Alrighty. Perfect. So let's see when uh, now this interview is being watched by members, subscribers, students, slash clients of the school who have joined the school to say him hey, and are watching this interview right now to say, Hey, I checked out uh, uh, Leslie and he is a blogger and he is now living with his family and earning an income. So that yes. gives a lot of hope in today's day and age to people to say, I too can do it. What mm -hmm. if you could break down step by step journey on how people who are watching this can start their journey as a blogger and then eventually, you know, uh, make it a full time profession and how much money they can earn and just throw some lights on that, please. Yeah, so I'll, I'll do that by telling my story of how I started. When I sure. started, I was actually, when I started my, I, have a, I had a biology blog and I started it because I was teaching at a high school, science and math, and I always wanted to be a university professor. Right. But I didn't have a PhD or anything of that sort. So I decided, you know what, I'm just going to do what I'm excited about and do that on the internet. So I started right. creating you know, biology videos and content and it was stuff that I was passionate about. It was for a very specific audience. And by creating that content and making sure it was good quality, it started to attract an audience. Of so the first step has to do with identifying something that you are very interested in, something where you know, there, there are people in the world that want to learn about that or they have specific problems that they need help solving and you are someone whether you're an expert or not you may not be like the biggest expert but you sure. might just be interested enough in that topic to study it and to learn it and to share what you're learning that's what i did i shared what i had learned about biology and as a result of that i was able to grow an audience so the first part was identifying who do you want to reach and what do you want to, what kind of content you want to reach them with? Then you start right. creating that content to attract that audience. Now, the next thing that I did was I started reaching out to other people that were in my space that were doing similar things. Somebody else with a biology blog and somebody else with a chemistry blog. And I started connecting with them in a way that ultimately resulted in them also referring people to my stuff. So my oh. audience was growing even faster as a result of that. And once you have that audience, it's a matter of determining, hey, what can I do to make money from what I'm building? So for me, it was things like I created a study guide. And while you could come and watch my videos for free, if you wanted to get the study guide, you would pay for the study guide. I put ads in my content and on my video. And as a result of that, the more views I got, the more money I was able to make. So it's a combination of uh, figuring out how can you help your audience solve their problems and providing right. those solutions for them. Got it. So awesome. Abhyana, maybe you can do a blog about horses and Raya, you can do a blog about performing arts. Mm -hmm. Great. That's Absolutely. I think, no, and, and that is very possible. You know, you're passionate about horses. Yeah, uh, there are a lot of people all over the world that are also passionate about horses. And you can teach simple things like how do you ride a horse and how do you uh, prepare your horse for the ride and so on, because there are people that are going online and they're looking for answers to these questions. 
And now if you're the one that's providing the answers for those questions, you can grow that audience. And as a result of that, you can start selling them, you know, different eBooks and courses and how to, how to work with a horse and so on. You just never know where that can lead. Nice. Good idea. And I'd really, I've, I've never heard this idea before where you said that you collaborated with people in uh, similar industries, chemistry, physics, yes. maths no, no, normally goes together. So a student who is going to a professor to learn chemistry may, all, the professor may see that he has biology problems and he refers. I thought that was a very smart move to make. Yeah, So absolutely. make lateral moves in your industry. Yeah, I, I remember the first time it, ha it worked successfully. I reached out to this lady that had a biology blog um, and I knew that she was getting a, a lot of traffic. And the reason I knew that was because no matter what I searched for, she was showing up in Google right. as number one. And that to me was an indication, hey, this, this person is getting some decent traffic. So I reached out to her because I noticed that she was having some problems with her blog. And since I was learning about blogging, I reached out to her and I said, hey, I, I love what you do. I use your blog in my class. Thank you so much for creating it. By the way, I noticed you're having some problems with your WordPress blog. Uh, Can I help you with it? 100% sure. free of charge, just as a thank you for what you're doing. And then I mentioned, by the way, um, I do have a biology blog here with some videos. You can check it out here. I didn't even ask her for anything. Sure. And she replied to me and the email was very short. It said, uh, thank you so much for your offer. I am so busy. I wouldn't even have time to take you up on it. But I did check out your blog and it's very cool. I just wrote a quick article about it here. And oh. I remember that month, um, it's just a really short article. Hey, I found uh, these biology videos on this site. You should check it out. And it linked to me. And that month I got over 400 people visiting the site. And for nice. me at that time, it was like, whoa, I've never had 400 people in a class, right? So right. it was awesome. And that led to, you know, other people checking it out, which led to other people checking it out and linking to it. And over time, you know, it grew to where I was getting 100,000 people in a month. So wow. it, it's been amazing to see how, you know, just connecting with other people from a perspective of, I want to support you. It's amazing to see how that can come back and actually help you to grow your business. So like uh, uh, Russell Brunson says in one of his books, Traffic Secrets, make a dream hundred list of people who are, could be in your ecosystem, reach out to them. But having said that, being a good human being, being a good Christian, do your best and leave the rest to God. What comes back, comes back. Don't expect things because that's when we get stuck, right? Oh, you know what? I sent out 20 emails. Only two people got back to me. Exactly. And I remember my, I had a spreadsheet and it had 86 different websites on it, similar to what you were just talking about. 86 different people. And I went and I found their contact information and what their site was about and are they linking to other sites and so on. And then I just started, I started reaching out to them. Now, it's probably only a handful of them that responded and did anything significant, but you just never know where those things can lead. Wow. So uh follow your passion teach somebody something that you have learned there are always somebody who's wanting to find questions to answer that may be easy for you but difficult for them when they're starting out and then reach out to people laterally in a, in similar industries and uh finally have a plan you had a plan of 86 people you just didn't shoot in the dark you had a plan you wrote them down you researched them and then yeah. sent them personalized notes to be able to say, this is what I want to do with you and eventually have no expectations and keep on going. Absolutely. Awesome. Great. Now you have your blog, you finding initial success, all that excitement is coming in for all the, again, I'm addressing the audiences. I'm thinking what they're going, what's going on in their minds right now. They're asking Leslie, when did you make your first thousand dollars? I mean, I need money for my family. When does it start <laughs> translating into the, the, the dollars? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And the answer to that question is, it all depends. Like it depends on so many different factors. Now, my, my journey actually started in 2008. And I remember it's because I learned about a way to use forums to make money with what, what were called freebie websites. Right. And I remember the first day of trying that out, I actually made $70. Um, and then what I did was I started a blog 
teaching people about how I did that. And I started to make some money relatively quickly. Um, it was in August when I started uh, blogging. And when I started blogging in August, I, when I was teaching people about how I did what I did, in September of that, like one month later, I did a, a special promotion. And the promotion was, hey, if you sign up for uh, hosting with specific websites using my link where I get a commission, I will help you to build your own website, teaching people nice. about freebies. And that month after, the, yeah, at the month after I started the blog, I actually made $3,000. Uh, and when I tell that to people, they're always like, oh my word, how in the world were you able to do that? And the key thing there was because all the, since January of that year to August when I started my blog, I was actually going out in forums and, 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 and providing a ton of value and networking with people and connecting with people. People started to know who I was and my name and that, hey, this is someone that can teach you about this. So when I actually started, I already had kind of like a built-in audience because of the work that I had done. And I was able to come up with an offer that was very attractive to them and that made sense with what they were trying to do. So I actually started making money very quickly. Um, now, from what I see, most pe- that doesn't happen with most people. Uh, right. Most people, it takes a while, while to build it up and to grow that audience and so on. But you have to think about it from the perspective of, hey, if I decide I am passionate about horses and that is what I want to, um, that's what I want to put out there into the world, well, how can I start engaging in maybe some Facebook groups and different communities online that are also interested in, in, the, um, in horses and not just engaging with them and saying, hey, I'm starting this website about horses and you should check it out, but actually going in there and when they ask a question, you go in there and you answer their question. You provide them with value. You become someone that is trusted because by doing that in all of these different communities, now you become known as, hey, you know, whenever I ask a question about horses, this is the person that uh-huh. gives me valuable answers. So that when you start a blog, or maybe you already started a blog, you can just, you know, somebody just asked a question about horses that's relevant to an article that you have on your blog that answers it in detail. You go into that Facebook group and you start answering their question and and you tell them, hey, here's a quick answer. But really and truly, if you want a more in-depth answer, you want to check out this blog post. It just right. makes sense now because they trust you, they know you, and they, they, they come over to get value from you. And if you have a, an offer that makes sense for them, they're going to be way more likely to actually purchase. Excellent. I love, I love the way you broke it down because I just the, the audience will be uh, super excited to see that there is a step-by-step system of getting ready. Uh, I wanted to ask you, Leslie, while this is happening for the audience that is watching the teenagers and their parents and their grandparents, you know, some going through challenging times due to the, pan- due to the pandemic and others yes. saying, I just want to downsize and retire or just be at home with my family. For all of these people, while you were doing this from the first $70 to the 3000 did you still have a job? And what would you suggest to these people? Like slowly make a transition because things take time. What should be the transition process? Absolutely. So when I started what I was doing, I was working as a high school teacher. And I started it in 2008. I was working at a high school teacher since 2006. I then, from 2006 to 2011, I was teaching at the high school. From 2011 to 2014, I was um, teaching as a professor. Um, so from, it took me till two, from 2008 to 2014 to make the Got decision it. to leave my job. I was building all of this on the side, you know, when I was on break, when I come home in the evening, when I wake up early in the morning around my job, I was working on building this business. And the key thing for me was 
you know, my income in my online business part-time kind of looked like this. It was going up and going down and up and down because I don't, I didn't have all the time to fully go in there. So when I did have time, I did well. When I didn't have time, things went down and it just fluctuated. But I had proven to myself that I could make money. And because I had proven to myself that I could make money, I knew that if I were to invest all of my energy in building the business, I knew I could do well with it. So I always tell people, don't just hey, leave your job and say, I'm going to start an online business. No, 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 no. Start it while you are working. Uh, start it while you're in school. Start it while there is some, some sense of security. Uh, if, you're a, if you're a child at home and your parents are taking care of the bills, start your business because it gives you time to test things out and to learn the ins and out. And as you start making money, it's going to give you more of the confidence you need to take it to the next level. That is lovely. Awesome. You know, I remember my mom used to say when I was struggling with studies in school, she used to say, all you need to do is study. And I was like, what do you mean all I need to do is study? I've got seven subjects. She was like, but that's all, <laughs> yeah. nothing else. And as life happens to you, you're like, you know what? If you keep the momentum going at an early age, when you have a roof over your head and everything is taken care of, by the time you get out, you have multiple street, multiple things that you can sort of focus on. You have a brand already built. That's exactly what we are trying to do in this daddy-daughter venture. I, by the time the girls leave for university or their respective professions, whatever they want to do, I would have said that I spent good four years. We've built a business together. Raya's got her own blog, her own. You want to tell him about your... your uh, yes, your... please. Tell me. Okay, I'll do it. Um, so I just recently started a YouTube channel around self-love. And um, because I feel like that's a really common issue with teenagers and especially for me because I was um, bullied for a bit. So I mm. wanted to kind of relate. Um, and so I just saw that a lot of times in my high school now, people are always talking bad about themselves. They have, you know, confidence issues. So I started, um, I really like vlogging and I started making vlogs when I was little and my friends were like, you should post this on YouTube and all that. So recently I started um, doing vlogs on Instagram and YouTube and through that, I'll just kind of put a quick self-love message or the video will be around trying new things, trying to find yourself. Um, so it's an entertaining way of learning how to love yourself. That, that is so awesome. Like I, I, I applaud you for doing that. And I wish that at your age, I was doing something like that. That is amazing. And I want to encourage you to keep going with it because you never know what kinds of opportunities that can give you in the future. And especially, you know, you're young and you said you, it's kind of like a fun way of doing it. Yeah, have fun. Like it, it, this is the time where you can have fun exploring these kinds of wholesome things that you can do. And you'd be surprised at how much that can do for you in, in the long run. So kudos to you. That's, that's just awesome. Thank you so, so much. So at this stage, there are many other teenagers in our internet moguls of the world school. I like the way I keep saying it. The school is not even launched. But once this video <laughs> goes on there, there'll be students like Raya at 14 watching uh, Leslie uh, applauding her efforts. What would be your three tips for Raya? in her blogging, blogging career, how should she take it? She's just about started. Because okay, she says, so I want to just... start making money on my own. It feels good. I think, why not go for it? What would be your first few? Okay, so my first step will be try as much as possible to be consistent. And I know everybody talks about consistency, but that is so important. If you, whether you're uploading videos once a week or whatever the case might be, do that consistently create that body of work. In doing that, what's going to happen is people are going to come to expect, hey, every Monday at 6 a.m. or whatever the case might be, there's going to be a new video from Raya and I can go and check it out and, and, and you know, be encouraged to, uh, where self-love is concerned. So that's number one. Be consistent in creating that content. Number two goes back to something that I already said look for pe people to collaborate with. And mm -hmm. it can be people that are just getting started 
or people that are a little ahead of you or whatever the case might be, because you guys can help each other to grow. Uh, right. If you have 10 subscribers and I have 10 subscribers and we, you know, we connect with each other. Hey, now there are 20 people that are exposed to the stuff that we're doing. And, you know, you'd be surprised at how that helps you to grow over time. That's mm -hmm. tip number two. And tip number three, I want to invite you to explore how, like what kinds of solutions are already out there that people that are interested in your content are spending money on. Oh. And I want, you to, I want you to think through, okay, this type of person is buying these kinds of products. They're paying for these kinds of services. And maybe they're not paying for it right now. Or maybe you're thinking about what they're going to be paying in the future. Because in thinking through that, you're opening up your mind to think, hey, what are the business opportunities that come along with what I'm doing? What are maybe some companies that I can collaborate with in the future? Just keeping that in mind in terms sure. of how you can actually take this and turn that into a business. But surrounding all of that, just have fun with it. Like if you have fun with it and you're creating these videos and I watch your videos and I think to myself, oh man, this is so much fun. She is enjoying herself. She's putting positivity out in the world and I can feel that from you. Uh, that's going to go a, a long way. Nice. Awesome. Thank Lovely. you so much. I unfortunately have my class now, but it was really nice meeting you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you for sharing with me what you're doing and I'm, I'm excited to check it out. Thank you so much. We'll send you the link after <laughs> yes. this. Satyana, you want to come here? Yes. What is your next question? Yes, ma'am. What is your next question? So my next Try question... Take chair. My next question is, we use the term internet moguls a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and for us in internet mogul, the definition is someone who spends quality time with their family, like, um, yeah, spell, spends quality time with their family, but also works hard and grows their business. Um, so what would your definition of an internet moguls be? I love your definition of an internet moguls, and I am stealing that. I am using that because, you know, for me, um, when I look at, success and when I look at what it takes to really accomplish what I'm trying to accomplish in life, it's nothing without my family. If you, if I become this multi-millionaire or billionaire growing this business and I lose my family in the process, it was not worth it. Oh. So to me, being successful online has to do with, I am building a successful business while I am there for my family in deep ways that helps them also accomplish the goals that we have for ourselves as a family. So I absolutely love your definition of internet moguls. When I, when I first heard it, when, you, when I got the email and I, I heard internet moguls, I had a picture in my mind that it doesn't, it didn't resonate. I, I, I didn't, I didn't, like it very much. I, th yeah, I was thinking more along the lines of, you know, those people that are at the top of the world and they're just making a ton of money and, you know, doing all these things. They're going in their private jets and yada, yada, yada. And I don't care about that kind of stuff. What I care about is I'm, I'm able to provide for my family. I'm able to give my family amazing experiences. And one of the most ex amazing experience that I can give them is the experience of having a loving father and husband that is there and is present with them, helping them also accomplish their, in, uh, their individual goals. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm all for that definition of internet moguls. I, 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 I love, I can't tell you how happy I am to hear you say that. So yes, that I'm going with that all the way. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let's see, you know, my next question is, uh, when somebody decides to become a blogger, 
Yes. A, what are the different revenue streams? Like, can you, like you said, one could be ads, the other could be, uh, you know, you sell your course to that, or maybe you can start blogging for others. Could you just elaborate on what could be revenue opportunities? Absolutely. Great question. So the, num the first one I always ex uh, talk about is ads because people are very familiar with how ads work, right? right? You watch TV, you see an ad, you know that, 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 that they're getting paid for that ad. It's the same thing online. If you have videos on YouTube and there's an ad that plays before or a banner ad that you click on and so on, uh, the more people that you have consuming your content that are seeing those ads, the more you get paid from those companies that are providing the ads. So that's right. one. Another way is the next way that I like to tell people about because it's, it's re it, on the list of different ways, it's relatively easy. And that's called affiliate marketing. And mm -hmm. with affiliate marketing, what you are doing is you are promoting a product or a service that's already out there. And you're using a special unique link that's your affiliate link. And if someone buys after clicking on that link, you get paid a, a, a commission. All right? right. So you might sell something for 50 bucks and you might get $10 for selling that. Or in some cases, you might get paid even more than they're making on the initial transaction because right. they know they'll make more money after. So affiliate marketing, basically, you promote somebody else's stuff and you get paid whenever you make a sale. Um, the reason why I like to tell people that one next, and I say it's relatively easy because you don't have to create the product. You don't sure. have to provide the service and the customer support and any of that stuff. You just have to let them know about it and be persuasive enough that they decide to check it out and then you get paid as a result. The next way is by creating your own product. So you mm. might create an ebook, you might create a course, you might create an actual physical product. I had right. a, one client that was make, she had a blog all about natural hair and she would make her natural hair products and sell that and people would buy it. So you can sell your own products. Uh, you can provide a service like coaching or consulting or uh, tutoring or something right. where you are getting paid for your time. So if you are well known as a horse expert, you can charge people for getting on a Zoom call with you and asking you questions about working with horses. And you can say, hey, I'm happy to get on this call with you. My rate is $50 an hour or whatever it is that is. And you can help them to you know, solve some of the problems that they have by offering your time. So that is providing a service. And there are other ways like you know, companies can pay you for promoting their stuff and so on. But those are the main ways that I tell people about when it comes to blogging. Lovely. So my, my next question is, Leslie, when it comes to blogging, do you need to naturally have a, a lot of people hold back saying, hey, I write just for fun. I mean, I can't write for the public and, you know, I, I, I don't have an English honors degree and I can't, you know, yeah. my punctuations. And so how do you, how do you remove that fear from people's heads and saying, you know, can they, can everybody write a blog even, you know, as long as they can get their message across in a fun, interactive, entertaining, educational way? So that's an interesting question because I tend to look at blogging differently um, from most people. When most sure. people think about a blog, they think about, you know, your writing and that's it. When I think about a blog, I think about a website where you are creating content and it sure. may be that you're writing, but it may be that you're creating videos. It may Got also it. be that you are doing a podcast and it's on your blog. Uh, I like to tell people if you're not the best writer, well, wh what, what kind of content are you good at creating? Are you better at speaking? Um, so are you better on video? If so, then do that and put it on your blog. And quite frankly, you can actually get someone to write for you. Let's say uh -huh. uh, some of the things that I've done is um, I create a video and then I hand it on to my assistant and she writes the article that goes along with that video, posts it on the blog with the video. I do a podcast episode, uh, hand it off to somebody else and they write the article based on the content that I cover in my podcast episode and put it on the blog with the podcast episode. Nice. So 
you don't always have to be the best writer in order to be successful uh, with a blog. Writing definitely does help. It helps for, you know, getting traffic from search engines and uh, a number of other things like that. Um, but as long as you can create valuable content that helps people, you have the ability to start a blog and be successful with it. Perfect. Love that answer. That is going to, I'm going to put a special as star to that because that is something people need to hear in their heads on how Absolutely. ways to perceive a blog in your head before you start creating your blogging journey. Uh, let's see for people who are watching right now, Mm -hmm. Should they do some kind of research online, Google Keyword Planner, Google Trends, answer the public, go deep and find a micro niche and say, I'm going to be only an horse expert that helps you take care of your horses, old horses, senior citizen horses, senior horses, yeah. or, uh -huh. or only help you take care of the, you know, of, uh, uh, say, if, you know, if you are uh, differently abled, how can you do horse riding? So when you take, a subject like horse riding and make it for differently abled human beings or for senior horses, you know, elderly, elder horses, older horses. Do you think these kind of micro niches will help you become an expert or is it too, you know, it's like, it's too small and forget about it. How do you decide? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. And I'm a fan of the micro niche. I'm a fan right. of saying, um, you know, here's the thing, right? In the early days of blogging, there was like one biology blog and there was like one blog on making money online. And, and, you know, but over time it's become much more competitive. Now you have, you know, hundreds of millions of blogs out there and there's so much more co competition. So right. if I wanted to have a blog and just be the biology expert for everyone, uh, it's going to be much harder because there's so much competition. And mm -hmm. that's why when I started my biology blog, I did my research and I went deep and I, re I, I eventually I ended up choosing a very specific niche. It wasn't just a biology blog. It was a biology blog for upper level biology students in the university that are taking a physiology class. That, that, is, is, very, called, yeah. that is very specific. But here's what that did. It made it so when that upper level biology student that was at university taking a physiology class, when they found my blog, they felt like this is exactly what I need. And this is what all of my other classmates need. I'm going to tell them about it. Tell my teacher about it. Tell everybody about it because it is so specific to what I am dealing with. So especially in niches that are very competitive, it is always a good idea to do your research and see what's out there and then niche down. And for me, even for those students, I did my research in that field and I saw that there were other blogs out there that were creating that kind of content, but they all had like long research articles and right. a bunch of boring stuff. So I decided I'm going to do mine completely different based on my research. I created short, fun videos covering one concept at a time. Got it. And by doing that, it was so specific and also so different from what was out there. And that is one of the reasons why I was able to get a lot of traction. So highly recommend niching down, doing some research, choosing that one subset of the population that you are focused on providing all the value with. That is amazing. Aviana, if you were to niche down based on what he just taught us, and you would say, I'm not going to do only horses, but a specific subset of horses. What topic would you choose? Um, if we're just going to go like into the details, uh -huh. um, I would probably do like how to first begin horse riding when you're about to get like when you're scared to get on the horse because it's your first time. Um, because that kind of relates to me because I was really scared when nice. I first got on my horse. Um, so yeah, probably do like how to interact with your horse when you first get on the horse or when you first see your horse and you're scared and you think it's going to like charge at you or something. So yeah, that's probably what I would do it on. And here's, here's the beauty of that, right? When, like, if I am an expert when it comes to horses, if I find your blog, I, I I'm going to say, Hey, this is not for me, but if I am that 
beginner. I'm that young girl that is thinking about horses, but I'm afraid of horses. And should I even get into it? And I find your blog and I read your stories. Hey, I'm, I'm all in. I want to, I want to watch that video of you doing the different things that you're doing with your horse, because I feel as if that is specifically for me. So that is a, a great idea. And I hope you do it because that would be awesome to see. Awesome. Let's see. I have uh, my next question is um, from the time that social media marketing world happened and we met to now, mm -hmm. how much, how have you become so shredded and lean? <laughs> <laughs> now looking you were always you know you always look strong but i see a very uh, different leslie in that in that t-shirt today well, well uh thank you uh, <laughs> basically every single day i exercise um i have an apple watch that tracks my activity every day and for the last if i were to look at it i think it'll say something like 280 something days in a row I've wow. exercised for at least 30 minutes every day. Um, I go through, um, I, I have an app that I use called Beachbody that has a bunch of different workout routines and so on. And I've just been, I, I've decided in, in, in less than three weeks, I'm going to be 40 years old. And I wow, made I a decision. Never guessed. I promise I could but, not have guessed. <laughs> well, thanks. Yeah, I made a decision that I am going into 40 in better shape than I've ever been in my entire life. And once I made that decision, it was just a matter of doing it. And to do that every single day, at least 30 minutes, usually closer to an hour, um, I'm, I'm exercising, I'm working out. I, you know, when the gym shut down and so on, I went online immediately and bought my dumbbells and mats right. and all that stuff so that I can continue my routine. But yeah, it's just a matter of being consistent with that and you know, trying my best to eat well. That is fantastic because it shows so, you know, you, 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 you look fantastic. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. So let's see the same uh, work ethic for all the viewers watching should be put into their blogging journey as well. Like one hour a day kind of a thing. Absolutely. Like, and, and that's the thing, right? We, here's what we tend to do. We tend to look at people that have millions of followers and we're like, oh man, if I could only get there. And what we don't realize is, it's just, it's the daily little yeah. steps that you take. If you take one step every single day, you are one step closer to your goal. So having that consistent daily, um, uh, the, taking consistent daily action is so important and it gives you that momentum. Um, and over time, what you'll see, you know, it's, it's hard as you're trying to build and there, it reaches a point where, wait a minute, it's getting easier. I'm getting better at what I'm doing. Um, I'm actually starting to get some traction. People are responding now more than they ever did before. And when I make an offer, people actually buy it. And that continues to grow and grow as you continue to take consistent daily action. What consistent daily action would you like to take after being inspired by today's talk? Um, I would like to start um, doing my horse riding blog now. Nice. So yeah, I, would, I now I would like to start um, doing my horse riding blog and every day making videos about or yeah videos or articles about how to like get on the horse and then once like you're done that you can interact with the horse. So yeah, I would like starting um, doing that like daily. Nice. That is awesome. You are inspiring me right now, and I love it. Lovely. Let's see, this brings us to the end of this uh, interview. We got all our questions answered in such a, you know, maybe because it was you, your high school teaching, uh, <laughs> you know, experience, you answered everything with, you repeated the subject, then you gave us three headlines, then you give a, then you repeated the fact that this is what you learned in this module kind of a thing. So I don't think this video needs any editing because everything was based on how we want our audience to consume this content and or go on their blog, blogging journey because like i said i used to be crazily proud of the fact that i've taken over a thousand flights in the last seven eight years uh i used to take about 104 flights a year at least oh wow and and 
I loved what I did. I, you know, my, my agency is like my baby. I grew it from scratch. We had no funding, no backup, nothing. We grew it with lots of problems and all of that. But at the same time, I was missing out on this time. And when I was here, I was missing the agency. And uh, so I don't want people to do the same thing that I did. Now in the last Mm -hmm. two years, we teach a program called Micro Video Mastery on how to do digital marketing through video, how to reach out to people through video, how to get known through video, how to do your sales through video, video funnels, everything around videos, primarily because you can do all of this from your computer and you don't need to travel. So in the last two mm-hmm. years, we shifted 60 to 70% of our business online. When I did that for a 200 member organization like ours, other people said, how did you do it? So in your next talk, why don't you talk about that? So I pu- put a presentation together and they said, what's the name of the product? And I said, uh, micro video mastery. And so that micro video mastery became a product and I started taking it to stages. When uh, I realized that again, I would make this product to get off stages and teach online And because this product was so well received on how a father wanted to stay close to his family, developed a product on everything around digital marketing with videos, I started getting invited to bigger stages and I was like, hang on, I'm getting back into where I started from. I let go of that and I went back to webinars. So in the last two, in the last 365 days, we've done over 200 webinars. And so we're doing webinars in the morning, webinars in the evening. We have 500 to a thousand people attending because I shut down the webinar, spend time with the family. And that's my new life, not letting go of the company, building another school right now, but doing 90% of the work on videos and sending this message to people saying that there are people like Leslie, there are people like Avi, there are many people who we meet in the social media marketing world and conferences in Singapore, Asia, Australia, wherever I've traveled. And I meet so many people who say, you know, the pandemic is really bad for the whole world, but hang on. I've been in lockdown for the last 20 years. This is my life. This yep. is what I do. I've always been home. So this, yep. this, this lifestyle of, you know, of crazy people like us is now yep. what we teach people uh, all around the world. So that once again, they can think and say, you know, that precious time when they come back home and say, I'm 50 or 55. And I think now I'm settled and I've got enough money. Hey, where are the kids? They've left. And you know, Hey, I don't have time with my parents. They're too senior or they've left. That yeah. regret will be removed if everybody gets into this uh, ecosystem. So that's why we build the school. And uh, I truly, from the bottom of my heart, want to thank you profusely because these moments that we're sharing together, I would have loved to interview you and learn so much from you, but because my daughters are here, the whole last 15 minutes has been so magical. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for supporting, supporting us over here. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on here. This has been amazing. And it's awesome to see you guys doing this together. Um, I am inspired by you all. And I wish you all nothing but the best.